you know, uh, by the way, this is going to be a personal video. Okay, so if you're looking for anything uh, global value or this is just very much a personal video. And um, it's more about why I choose, I choose not to forgive my mother or to forgive or forget what my mother has done or not done. Now, I'll tell you why, okay, in this video and you can put your thoughts down below. Now, you know, when you say mother, you get all these loving feelings of, you know, I was in your womb for nine months. You carried me, you gave birth to me, I drank your milk, you know, so that that bond that is there. And if you see any, any literature, any JPEG image, any writing, anything, even if you see an animal photograph, you would see the child near the female, whether animal or human being, hugging, holding, loving. So there's always that love. Like see, for example, here, you have this, I don't know, male or female, uh, buffalo, cow or whatever, and with a baby calf. It's a mother and, mother and, uh, you know, child, daughter, son, whatever, I don't know. Not much into cows. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, yeah, there's always this, this, this beautiful feeling of, you know, loving a human being, especially a woman who brought you into this world. In fact, there's very less devotion towards a father, but more towards a mother. It's always the case. Now, I'm pretty sure almost everyone will tell well-intentioned people, they'll say, Lord, forgive your mother. You know, you have to forgive. She loves you. You love her. God will forgive you. You know, it's humanity and it was past is past. Forgive and forget. I have received so many messages like this. Okay. And let me tell you, you'll be surprised to know I've tried my level best to try, make an effort to try to forget about it, to patch up. I, I have literally tried to patch up with my mother and stepfather. I've tried many times in the past when I was young. Many, many times. Huh? This is not just once. Uh, even when I had tattoos, I would try, I would take my mother and father for, stepfather for movies, outing, food. I tried my level best. Sadly, it never worked out. And I'll tell you why it didn't work out. Because my stepfather was still a fucking loser. His mentality, he still... <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll give you an example to tell you his mentality. We are sitting and eating food, you know, kind of like this, trying to become a family. I'm trying to make it like a family. Okay. So my stepfather is sitting here. My mother is sitting here. I'm sitting here. And we are eating food. And we are talking like, supposedly like a family. I remember, you know, this girl who's tattooed here. I bought her to introduce the family. Okay, this is uh, 15, 15 years ago. This is an actual incident. Huh? So I bought this girl. My mother's here, father's there, I'm sitting here. And I bought the girl to introduce for marriage and, you know, I wanted it to be proper. So my mother was completely, you know, oh, she's so beautiful, she's so cute, oh, she's Mangalorean, she's Catholic, and this and that. She was so happy. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I wanted them to get along and get to know each other. My mother takes my, this girlfriend, takes her in the bedroom. Okay, just remember this, huh? She was 18, I was 31. She takes her in the bedroom. So I was like, yeah, she wants to talk to her about, you know, that mother, daughter-in-law, pre-wedding talk kind of thing. Okay. I don't know, 20 minutes or 25 minutes, so long time passes by. Finally, 
they come out my mother's all excited and but i see my girl she is she's not happy at all her face is down uh, and she's quiet okay she sits down and i noticed but i you know it's like okay maybe something whatever so i talk to my father we are all eating we finish food and then we leave so i take my girlfriend and uh, you know remember i bought my girl to talk about marriage for me me and her to introduce to my family because i really love the girl as she's sitting down and she's not talking man like sweet or what happened why you so upset and finally she the first words that come out from her mouth is like does is this really your mother hmm I'm like what uh, of course it's my mother and the next one she says does your mother really love you i'm like what the f- why the fuck are you asking all these questions i found it very strange i was not angry i was like why the fuck are you asking all these questions she says like law your the mother doesn't love you hmm i'm like I was still in a like, you know, like hey, hey. I was like, what are you talking? You know, I, like me and I, I told her we have not been very close. We are repairing the relationship, but mother is mother. Then she did something that shocked me, absolutely fucking shocked me. She said, "Loy, here," and I was like, "What?" She's giving me something. You know what did she give me? She gave me th- she my girlfriend gave me the photograph passport size of my step brother who is I think 11 or 12 years younger to me. I'm like what the fuck are you doing with my brother's photograph? My half brother. She then she says lawyer your, your mother gave me this. I'm like why the fuck did my mother give you this? she's saying my your mother took me in the room and she was telling me my she was telling me about you that you are a loser you are a failure you are a womanizer you are not good you take girls you bring them you dump them and she was telling me that i should marry her younger son much better more educated he is going to get all the property wealth he is studying in australia those days he was studying in australia to be a pilot and he is much better and uh the family supports him and she will also take care if if my girlfriend marries my mother uh, my my step brother she will take care and she will ensure that she gets property and i <laughs> i'll tell you i was just i was just fucking stunned stunned was an understatement i didn't know what the fuck to say you know it's a good thing we were not driving i don't know what would have happened we had we are just sitting down in the parking area and i just couldn't believe it i i couldn't believe what my mother just did <sighs> see th- this is just one incident one the bottom line uh, for my mother is she loves my step brother for he maybe because he's good and i'm bad and he was always an obedient child and i was a troublemaker he doesn't talk much i talk too much and he is the son of the second husband who she married and i am the son of the unwanted first husband and i don't know you can think of all the reasons in the world but what she did is nothing but an example of the many things that she has always tried to do like she would treat like uh, this is actual incident huh? uh, real throughout my whole life you know nuts almonds cashew nuts peanuts uh, ca- uh, you know dry grapes chocolates we are a catholic mangalorean family so we used to buy them and uh, the thing is my mother used to keep this hidden in the bedroom my mother and stepfather used to sleep in the bedroom with my step brother i used to sleep in the hall room in the main hall alone on the floor uh, we used to sleep on the floor that is okay he used to sleep uh, with them and later on they put a bedding for him down i used to sleep on the floor and uh, not floor like as a servant like put the bedding down and sleep on the ground my grandma used to sleep also there so i was always treated like and 
my brother had access to all the almonds, cashews, nuts and chocolates. How I knew this is when they would go to work and my brother was not there, I would sneak into the room. You know, these old time cupboards, they are not sophisticated. It's easy to open as to see the almonds and all that and as to eat and then as to close it. Pocket money my brother, stepbrother used to get, I used to never get. In fact, the biggest one, my stepfather had violently beaten me up almost every week of my life. I wouldn't say every day, because every day he wouldn't hit me so violently, but every week he would beat me until blood used to come out with the Arab, you know, bamboo, rubbery cane until it used to break for an hour or something used to keep whacking full force. My stepbrother, he never touched once. I just remember once he hit him and my brother got angry and locked himself in the door. <laughs> he only touched him once. Now, I'm not saying that you should have beaten him in the same way he beat me, you know. I'm telling you the difference. And as we grew up, my mother went to all the pundits, all the fortune tellers, all the people who practice black magic to bless my stepbrother. You know, when a guy who's reading your palm, they are very sly, very smart. They can read in between the lines. So when my mother say, what about this son? Okay, and what about this son? The way she would say it, they would always predict I would be the loser. My stepbrother would be this multi-billionaire rich guy. And I'll tell you, <laughs> once I actually sat down when this Pandit was doing the prediction, he is telling in front of me, your this son is very lost, he's telling me, in front of me. I was uh, in my 30s old that time, yeah. He's very lost and all, but that son, Australia, he'll become very big, he'll become multi-millionaire. And my mother, she's, <laughs> she's showing her hand to a Hindu Pandit. And she's, when he says this, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. My brother had access to my mother and father's bank accounts. Hey. So I know what you'll say, oh, you're very bitter. See, today it doesn't matter to me. Then you'll be like, why do you remember it? Because today I have a child. Today I have a small little baby. I am the age of my mother when I was small, my mother and father. I can't do the, not even 10% or 5% of what injustice my parents did towards me. I can't even dream of doing that. Forget violently hitting, locking up a child in a room, tearing books, not allowing the child to read books, telling the child you're a bloody mistake, you should die. <laughs> How do you do that, man? What kind of sick individual do you have to be? What? I mean, how sick, how, I, I don't even know what word to use, how twisted and demented and evil you have to be to torture a child like that every single day, telling them you're a mistake. In fact, my mother and stepfather used to go to my teachers, all my teachers and be very strict with him, beat him as much as you want, no problem, nothing will happen. They used to fucking violently take advantage of this. In the church, I had no support as to be bullied by everyone. For my education, they sent me to India. For my brother's education, they sent him to Australia. I'll give one more example before I reach the actual conclusion. This actually happened story. My mother took the health club, you know, a health club for bodybuilding. They bought it for, I think, 300,000 dirhams. Okay, then this guy tried to cheat them and they took it to court. Eventually, my mother won. But now, they realized they purchased a gym and they didn't know how to run it. Those days, I used to know bodybuilding and I was crazy about bodybuilding supplements. I knew all this. And I was working for a company called Almo, A-L-M-O-E. Uh, one of the partner's owners died. Uh, he moved to Australia. I don't know if the company is still in UAE, A-L-M-O-E. I was working as a uh, sales marketing executive, technical, you know, for sounds and lights. So, they bought this gym and I saw an opportunity where I could take charge of the gym and run the gym because I was passionate about bodybuilding. 
So my mother used to say, come train in the gym. It was in Rola, in Sarja. So I came there, I saw it was completely a mess. They didn't know how to keep the equipment. They didn't know, they didn't know anything about gym and equipment. So I told my mother, I'll run the place. If you can give me, if you can make me in charge. My mother was hesitant, my father, stepfather was hesitant, but finally they said, okay, fine. So I took the title of manager for the gym. I slowly started to set up the place, set it up, got new staff, trained the staff, bought new supplements, negotiated with vendors, created a set of programs, created marketing sales. And before you know it, they didn't have, they didn't have any new customers. They were getting two or three. It was at the heart of the city of Rola. It was near the old Gita, near the subway. Those of you who are in Rola would know this, near the subway. As soon as you come down the SNTTA building bridge, uh, Gold Souk is on the right hand side. As soon as you come down, maybe 200 meters is the gym. I bought it up to a level where there were almost 300 new members. And each one, majority of them had paid for a year. I had successful programs. It was a full house. It was making money. My terms were, I want 5,000 dirham salary. Okay, those days. And, uh, you know, I want total in charge. And I really wanted to keep the gym open on uh, Fridays. I, I wanted it to be open 24 hours. Because I wanted to keep the customers happy. So everything was going fine. Until one fine day, one day. Uh, <laughs> my brother came down from Australia. He's still doing his pilot license thing. He's, I think, 11 years. I told you. Age difference or whatever. He comes down and uh, there I, I see him sitting on my chair. You know, we have this office and it's see-through glass. You can see where everyone's working out in the gym. And my mother is uh, my mother's sitting there. My father is, stepfather is sitting. And he's sitting there. And there I notice on the door, they have put his name, general manager. Now, I'm not trying to blame him, okay? It's not his fault, he was a young boy. My mother and father, now imagine I'm Loy Mesido, I'm the manager. My brother is a general manager. What does that mean? Okay, that's one. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I kept quiet. Slowly, my brother started to implement whatever strategies he knew, which he learned from Australia, I guess. I was following the strategies that used to work for uh, the local market, Malbari, Indian crowd, you know, low income earners, because Rola is not a very posh place. So where I had made it very affordable and cheap for the mass crowd, my brother decided we are only going to have whites, white skin people from Dubai and high expensive locals. And slowly he started to undo every change I did. Like I asked to invite people, even people who had little bit of money, join for a few few days, uh, you know, make it affordable. He made it expensive and removed all the old members. He brought in an ID system. He made, he doubled or tripled, I think the gym membership fee. I had made it cheap. He made it three times more expensive. And within, I think a year, the sales dwindled. He put electronic badge system. Nobody wanted that. He asked for people's ID. Nobody wanted to give him that because people were like, why, why you want my fucking ID? You know? And then I would allow people to sit and talk in the gym and kill time. And you know, if you wanted to watch a bodybuilding show, he stopped everything. Only do exercise. You can't sit and watch this. You have to behave yourself. He would insult, insult members on their face and say that you're smelling, you're stinking. Get out. And people are like, you're insulting me after paying money. There's a way. Like I used to tell, I used to tell people, bring your towels and all that, but I used to not insult by saying you're a cheap guy. And <sighs> what happened in the end? Well, uh, as when business picked up, this is the end result. But when it was right at the top, my mother told me, we don't need you anymore. You can stop coming to the gym. Just imagine, it was like a 
hostile takeover and they threw me out when the gym was doing very well i just kept quiet and obviously my brother was being pumped by them and he said please roy leave my parents he's telling me leave my parents alone and my mother was like our son so i was back to square one after making this gym happen well uh, i'm not saying that i would have made it a multi million dollar business eventually because of competition or whatever it would have shut down but with my mother's unstable mind greed and a desire to worship my step brother half brother whatever it completely destroyed the business within i think couple of years and they ended up with a loan of almost a million 1 million taken money from other people banks this that everything and eventually they were thrown out <laughs> they didn't pay the rent they didn't pay salaries they didn't pay anything i was not there anymore by that time now once again i'm telling you i don't hold my step brother responsible he was a young boy it's my that mother's brains it's the greed of this evil stepfather see i give you two examples okay i give you two examples there are many more i don't want to get back but what the the bottom line what i'm trying to tell you is today i'm as old as my mother when i was a small boy just imagine if you met an adult you met an adult of your age who is torturing a small child would you forgive that person would you say it's cool man or would you be disgusted just because a person is in their 60s or so doesn't mean they get a free pass if you cannot forgive someone who's your age who will torture a small baby and you'll not have any compassion why should i have compassion can you forgive a pedophile no you can't can you forgive a person who tortures small children no you can't then why then why do you want me to forgive a person who is who tortured me who tormented me who tried to destroy me why why don't you let someone do that to your child and you take the high road and say i forgive you for torturing my child for molesting my child for doing bad things you forgive no you take the high road in the name of jesus and forgive no why are you asking me and that is exactly the reason why when my mother calls she calls here and there she wants to talk to my daughter i tried i tried interacting but i realized this woman would never change and why she still asks for money shameless woman after putting me on the road when i needed her the most i don't know if you know in 2011 that video when i was going to kill myself when i didn't have money to even eat food she i called her up and she says wrong number she put the phone down and the other one was ask your brother permission permission to seek help and on top of that my my stepmother also sorry my mother made it very important that none of the relatives would help me she called up all the relatives and said don't help him and the same shameless woman calls me up to ask for money and she tells me it's your duty to take care of us we took care of you so long we looked after you what have you done in return sometimes you know my blood boils when i listen to all this but i've realized the best revenge the best revenge is for me to have a happy family life happy family life and ignore her that will pain her more than anything in the world i'm not going to shout at her i'm not going to abuse her nothing enjoy my life i have tried so many times crying to her pleading with her begging her even when she was dying in the icu in between she overdosed on some astelin inhaler which was not supposed to take i cried i wept i wanted to make peace but what i realized a shameless woman 
or a human being with no values, no conscience, no morals, they'll never change, man. And some of these people, when they become old, they become even more hardened. Today, my stepbrother is taking care of them. He's paying for their money, paying for their expenses. He's a good guy. He's not a bad guy. Him and I, we have nothing against each other. We just look at each other as we were, you know, guys with no options put in a journey together. Uh, many people say he looks like me or I look like him or we behave like him. I, I don't subscribe to that. I feel people cherry pick. He is a unique individual. Is he better than me? Uh, most probably yes. He's more stable. He is more focused. I don't know much about him, to, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know much about him, but he's settled down. He's married. Uh, I s spoke to him a year ago. We just, hi, how are you? Bye. Everything okay? Fine. Chill pill. Nothing more than that. So, we don't have any bad blood between us. But as far as my stepfather, half-father, what? Stepfather, sorry. And my mother goes, I don't want anything got to do with them. He can take care of them all he likes. You know, the funny thing is, um, he used to always say, I want to take care. And my mother used to say, oh, he will take care of me. And all that. In fact, I'm so grateful that they kept drilling this in my head that he will take care. He's a better son. Today, I don't have to pay a single penny to take care of them. I'm so glad. Fuck. Just imagine if I had to keep sending them money every month. So they have solved me. That's one good thing they did. Gave me third class worthless education and raised me up to be this much. With all the abuse, I don't have to pay back. Thank you. And neither will I give them any credit nor will I give them any respect. And if they die, eh, I'll make a video on it and share my thoughts. The first time when she was going to die, my heart was breaking, but now I'm used to it. <laughs> I'll tell you, I wouldn't hope, pray or wish such a mother and father even to my worst enemy. Because it is, if you die once, someone just kills you once finished. You don't have to take it anymore. But if you're made to die every single day, made to suffer every single day, made to cry every single day, and you're reminded you're a mistake, you're a, you're a this, you're a that, you're unwanted, you're... And on top of that, no guidance and torturing you, that also a child. I mean, like I said, if you have that big of a heart, allow someone to torture, molest, rape, Torment, beat bloody your child and you take the high road and say, I forgive you. Continue beating. If you cannot forgive your age, an adult who will do that to a child, you cannot forgive. Why the fuck should I forgive? Man? Come on. I'm sorry, but uh, there's no free pass to a person who has tried to murder the spirit, the character, and the future of a child. There's absolutely no one who can convince me. Today I have a baby. Forget, even if I had other babies, I, I wouldn't torture the way they did. So I'm sorry, I... Yes, I have a few photographs of my mother and me. Happy, happy. Apart from that, I'm sorry, nothing else. Anyway, thought I'd have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you as to why I'll never forgive my mother. Never. Never. And uh, I want them, I don't want them to die because then it's an easy way out. I want them to live and suffer. Enjoy. Enjoy. Being poor, being miserable. Suffer, suffer. All the shit you made me go through and you made other people, now you enjoy. Because if you die, finish, no? It's over. Anyway, either one of them will die first. So I'll wait for it. And uh, if my stepfather dies first, I'm not going to torture the 
the mother but still i'll ignore her but if my mother dies first ooh that will be fun stepfather he will yeah he will be alone and lonely and frustrated and that would be so nice oh i just love to call him and ha 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 laugh you know i just tell him like that <laughs> maybe i'll not do that you, you know me i'll not do that anyway man for someone who tortures pains a small little child no don't ask me to forgive them sorry they deserve to live and suffer for the rest of their lives anyway this is what i wanted to share with you guys like i told you nothing against my step brother he and i are chill pill it's just these two never forgive especially my mother so anyway feel free to share your thoughts down below put whatever you want to say pretty chill pill all right it's me signing off and by the way you want to know where they are they are in mangalore india right now i think they are 60 62 or something yeah they still there i have no interest in what they do anyway put down your questions i'll answer them or your statements or whatever okay stick here it's me signing off chal